welcome to the spot real talk my name is tiara i'm tiffany and i'm ron and we have our guest spotters with us today uh, we'll start with ladies first to introduce yourselves hi i'm Maisha from arlington va hey dme yep and empress hi my name is empress howard and i'm from chicago Yay! Woo! We got wow. somebody in Chicago. <laughs> yes. Okay, this is gonna be good. Now we're gonna throw it to the fellas. Uh, Hassan, welcome back. Always happy to be here. What's up, Hassan? How are you? How are you? Everyone from Philly. From Philly. Uh, my hometown. Amen. All <laughs> right. And last but not least. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is Nate from Philly. Hey. Uh, ready, 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 and ready. All right, and we stand up. <laughs> yes, we are so happy to have you guys with us today. It's a special treat. Uh, we have some very special guests. I believe our guest is here. Hey, hey, hi. hi. Jason, Hello? Genesis, Judea. Rashad. Okay. Okay. The shy is in the building. Shy is in the building. Oh, my God. Shy is in the house. You guys okay, so everybody. much for taking the time today to join us. If you are not aware for whatever reason, we have some of the castmates of the shy with us today. And we are so excited to talk to you guys. This is really amazing to get three of you and to talk about the show because we are really big fans. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, for, first of all, let me let me just say this, guys. I want to thank you all. Um uh, for number one, supporting the show. Uh, I actually, from Showtime and from Lena, they sent me um, screen clips or just clips of like the commentary that you guys have, like regarding mm -hmm. the show, during a, doing a recap. It's really, really in-depth analysis that you guys are sharing mm -hmm. with people that goes deeper than the surface level mm -hmm. that um, actually provokes us to have a discussion as a community about a lot of different um, you know subjects that we're, we're covering in the show. So I just want to salute you guys um, for supporting and also, you know, creating that forum uh, where we can have a more meaningful and deeper discussion based on the things that we're covering in the show. Second, I want to thank my nieces, Judea and Genesis, for taking time out to do this with me. I personally reached out to them uh, yesterday. It was kind of last minute. Um, because first and foremost, I didn't want to take up all the time talking about myself and my role on the show, I think these two amazing actresses, amazing young and beautiful actresses have so much more to share um, as it relates to, you know, the role that they play in the roles that they play in the show. And also, you know, just the storyline, especially with, uh, with what Judea's character is going through now, where she's having to make the decision of whether she's going to keep a child or not. We have the re reversal of Roe versus Wade. So I think these ladies have a lot to share and to offer to the conversation. So thank you, ladies, for joining Uncle Jason today. Thank you. <laughs> and let, let me say the checks in the mail, Rashad. Thank you very much. <laughs> and listen, and I wanted to say too, I know that all three of you are Chicago natives. Um, one of our fans is also from Chicago here on the call too. So Let's we go. wanted to have some one of the fans here to represent for y'all. Thank you. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you. It's always good to have Chicago in the building. Yes, right. so, Ron, you want to kick us off? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Well, let me start with you, uh, Rashad. Got a question mm -hmm. for you. Um, sure. Your relationship with Trig, it, it, it seems like you have more of a control on over Trig than what was earlier perpetrated. Uh, you know, it seems like you... You 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 got his buttons. You know which buttons to push. You know how to make him turn right and left. Is, is that is that a fair statement? Um, I think fair to some degree when you talk about shot knowing, you know who Trig is at at the root of of who he is as a character and as a person. Um, you know these these are two guys that essentially grew up together, um, in you know kind of like tough and, and rough circumstances growing up together on the streets of the south side of Chicago. Um, they've had to raise one another. They've had to help one another and be there for one another and uplift one another at times when the both of them have been at their lowest. So I think what, you know, what both of the characters I think are able to successfully do with one another 
is to call each other on their bullshit. Excuse my language. Oh, no, right, yeah. um, you know, they, they, they challenge each other as black men, uh, which I think is healthy uh, to, to show on television. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not always about um, agreeing with one another or just going along for the ride for the sake of going along for the ride. You know, these are, are two black men who are on their own separate paths, but are, you know, kind of joined together on, on a journey. And I think they understand the responsibility that they have to take care of one another. So because they recognize that responsibility of having to take care of one another, um, you know, there, there's no room for, for playing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they have to be very straight and straightforward and frank with one another. I, I think you're seeing more of that with Shad in this season. Yes. Uh, but last, but, you know, last season when Shy first entered into the overall Shy storyline, you know, he's very rough around the edges and had to be checked, mm -hmm. you know, more than a few times. Right. So, yeah, I, I think they just, uh, they set each other off, you know, very, very well. Excellent. Much respect. All right. Oh, thank you. you. <laughs> okay. Um, my question is for all three of y'all. And it's the same question, but I'm starting with Jason because... You're the OG, <laughs> and um, <laughs> you've had a storied career. You know, going for Lion King, Michael Jackson is one of some of my faves. ATL and um, Drumline and so forth. And I've enjoyed the the arc of Rashad from last season to this season. And I just wanted to know, like you guys are Chicago natives, what does it mean to you to be a part of this show, The Shy? And that is the same question I'm presenting to also Judea and Genesis as well after Genesis, um, Jason finishes. Well, and I'm going to keep it real short so these ladies can answer. Uh, but I, I would just say, speaking as a Chicago and born and raised, being a part of the show is everything to me. Uh, this is the story of my people, my community. This is how I grew up. Maybe not necessarily the same way that the characters, you know, in the show are going through, um, you know, their, their situations in life. Um, but what I'm really proud about, about this show is that we're showing the Chicago that I know, mm -hmm. which is family, neighborhood, community, cookouts, um, going to school, you know, having little fights there, the camaraderie and the brotherhood that you have, you know, that you have with your boys, um, interacting with young ladies as we're all going through our, our adolescence and trying to figure each other out and figuring ourselves out. I mean, those, those were all things that I identify with growing up as a young black kid on the south side of Chicago and partly in the south suburbs as well in South Holland. Shout out to South Holland. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I think that's what I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of, um, you know, speaking as a black man and a native Chicagoan is that we're, we're giving people the real story. We're showing people what Chicago is all about because mainstream media has a, has a tendency Mm -hmm. to present uh, the city of Chicago and in particular the black communities, the black and brown communities that exist there as if we're, it's damn near like a third world country. And, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. damn near referring to it as a war zone, a la the term Chirac. I mean, I know that that's a term that came out on the street, mm -hmm. um, but, it, but it, it came out of the street because the kids, all they, all they knew about their town that the mainstream media was talking about was that it was similar to a war zone. So I think what, what, we're, what we're doing successfully right now is just presenting a different narrative uh, regarding what the Black experience is like growing up in Chicago and existing on the South Side of Chicago. Ladies? Yes, um, Judea. <laughs> yeah, to piggyback off of what Uncle Jason said, I, it means a lot to me because our show gets to show um, so many different types of uh, like Black people in the community. Um, like Gemma, you know, she plays the, I guess you could call her the black white girl, you know, and I'm happy to be able to portray that and show because I know a lot of black white girls. I was the black white girl. Um, <laughs> school, so it's super cool to be able to play that and to show other girls like it's okay that like sushi is your favorite food, but you from Chicago, <laughs> like that's okay. It's nothing wrong with that, you know? Um, it's okay if you want to wear your natural hair, you know, you don't got to get your knotless braids down to the floor. Like you can wear your pro, <laughs> you can wear your pops, or you can just, you know, wear your little, whatever you want to wear, like it's cool. So um, it means a lot to be able to, you know, portray that. And I always get the little babies, like their parents would DM me like, Oh, she didn't want to wear her natural hair to school, but like she saw Gemma on TV. So like 
and they send the pictures of the little babies and it's just like <laughs> so yeah i love it so that, that's that's my favorite part so yeah it means a lot though, being um from chicago and to the south suburbs to just you know get to tell real stories excellent all right in yeah. genesis uh yeah no so i think this is what it looks like when people who love your city um, as much as you love your city, show it and are empowered to do so in the right way. Um, like Uncle Jason said, you know, a lot of the, the messages that we get about Chicago are from the news. It's not every day you see a show with a predominantly melanated cast where we come out and fully attack each time problems that happen in Chicago society or just in society in general. So it's beautiful, I think. I think we, we, we're supposed to be here for however long they keep us here and we will continue to tell that story until we can't no more. That's right. Mm -hmm. Love That's that. Right. Yeah, you guys are all doing a superb job with the acting. I mean, it's so mm -hmm. tight. Mm -hmm. um, and Thank you know, you Genesis, all. I was looking, I was stalking your IG girl. I did not know that you really do, do this in real life. Like, I was like, maybe they write her rap for her as part of the script or something. But I was like, oh no, this girl gets busy. <laughs> No, this this pen works for real. I I, um, <laughs> I, I, I heard if that. You, if you think if you think I don't, you know, unless unless you see me somewhere being like, shut up, my label, that's me. I wrote it, so I I just I make that I make a point of doing that, you know, because again, how the industry works. That is something that my father and my mother both instilled in me is if you're gonna do it, do it originally. Well, mm. like I, like I always say, you got 15 seconds if you love to spit it, spit, you know. Go right ahead. Nobody stopping you anytime. Oh Lord! Are <laughs> <laughs> y'all putting on the spot? <laughs> gonna put no, on the spot. Fifteen seconds is crazy. Oh, right now. No, no, I, I'm, just, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But if you, I'm want, like, you, I, I'm like, I'm here. If you got fifteen <laughs> seconds, now, hold, hold up now. I was joking, but if you got fifteen seconds, you want to spit by all means. <laughs> um. I am affirmation royalty, been at since out the womb. Word of mouth is my greatest asset. I mean, I can get everyone on the same page without reading the room or touching a pen and pad yet. Do this song slap yet? Maybe I should stop spitting and give you vocals. Pretty notes do get you more excited instead of hearing the real. Some of y'all just want to blast rap cap and chill because only 808s and auto tune got that euphoric feel. Well, I'm Ooh. sorry, but that pen go hard. I make handshakes with the sun. No need to reach for the stars. Atmosphere is a masterpiece. I make grooves and gods. Light years ahead of you rappers, infinity and beyond see even your favorite lyricists can get with this ambitious is my vision to make any average person seem delirious i'm serious power of my words is just ridiculous name another rapper that you think is far with genesis go ahead i'm listening just know that we different. Well, we all <laughs> they're just all americans trying to battle me will really be a bummer but someone got to bring the heat up in this cold summer I'm oh, dropping the phone. I ain't got a mic, but I'm dropping my phone. Wow. Dennis has got to walk off now. She got to drop the mic. <laughs> it is so dope. That's it. That's it. That is no, dope. but you know what? Done. Dropping the mic is actually an offense in 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 rap anything. Yeah. Right, right. You drop the yeah. mic or you let it hit the feedback. You got 20 push-ups. <laughs> I never did 20 push-ups, as y'all can see. So <laughs> that just means that, that it worked. That's all right. Dennis says, I dropped my I dropped my iPhone on purpose for you. So you know. That's beautiful. <laughs> no, that's dope. She's dope. Oh, Appreciate yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's great that you guys can um actually share the true authenticity of Chicago. You know, um, like you said, uh Jason, um Chirac or you know, the 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 ex that has been put on Chicago is what we're experiencing now in Philly, right? So you guys have, you, you guys, you do a great job. You know, I've always uh, followed you. Of course, you know, you my favorite in ATL, of course. But getting, you, you know what I mean? Then, then Lauren London and then T.I. Oh, you, oh you know. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I wish, I wish Lauren could see this video. I know, right? <laughs> so, but, it, but it's so great that, you know, that to watch you guys, you know, um, true, true, true talents, right? And to, to, to watch Gemma go through what she's going through now, like you said, uh, if you watch one of our, uh, our, our, so our shows last, I think it was the week before, when we brought up uh, Roe, Ro, uh, Ro, yeah, I think Ro, we brought it up, right? Ro, 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 yeah, I think we brought it up then about that, right? Yeah. You guys are talking about uh, facts that's going on right now, you know, things that's 
that's going on right now. And it makes it so great that people can watch. And, you know, somebody might be dealing with the same situation right now in high school, yes. you know, in, in, in middle school, whatever it may be, but they see Gemma go through it and, and the strong woman that she is, that can help them overcome it all. Okay. That's right. It's crazy that you that you mentioned that, too, because, you know, unbeknownst to us as we were filming, because we have wrapped uh, our, our official last day on the show was like May 17th. Mm -hmm. um, so this is before Roe v. Wade was overturned. And, um, you know, I remember reading in the script when we would do our table reads. And I thought to myself then I was like, man, this is a it's a really strong subject that. Um, that I'm glad that we're tackling and I'm, and I'm glad that, you know, these two young ladies in particular are the ones that are helping to tell that story. Because I think so many young ladies and particularly young black women are, are able to identify with the story. And, you know, it's unfortunate um, that Roe v. Wade has been overturned, you know, regardless of whatever people's religious beliefs are and all of that right. stuff, I believe a woman has a right to choose. Right. So, you know, I think um, what's, what's actually, um, encouraging i guess to say in 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 the midst of of all of that that's been going on politically and socially regarding the subject um i think at least we have you know programs and shows out like the shy dealing with this particular subject matter that maybe can help provide some guidance um you know to young ladies who are going through a similar situation so i'm glad that you brought that up and that was another reason too you know, I wanted the ladies to to come on with me because, um, again, I think you know more young black women's voices need to be heard. Um, you know, not not only out in the street, but you know, even creatively and how they express themselves. So I'm glad you brought that up. And ladies, you can you can echo please and, and share what what you thought as well regarding uh, yeah. you know, your um, storyline. I think I think I the show has a way of tackling things that we that we don't know actually happens until the show comes out. Um, I know, and I think that's just, that's just God. That's just what we do. That's, that's the swag and the flavor of the show. Um, mm -hmm. But I think in this particular story, um, this time, Judea does a wonderful job of portraying exactly what, what it could be like, but still maintaining being a strong black girl in this society. I think it's wonderful to see her do it each time. Um, this process, I think, as far as shooting, it, it I don't know if it was hard on a Judea. You can you can explain that a little bit more, but I think for me, it was just it was interesting to see phases because you know sometimes actors we we have a we have a bit of a struggle um, telling certain stories that aren't particularly ours all the time. Um, but you did does a wonderful job of doing it. So, I mean, I don't know how it was for you, Ju, but it was it was great to see. Yeah, I mean, I think we all have an opinion on abortion until we're actually in that situation, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and personally, I've never been in the situation, but um, I have a lot of friends who have been in the situation and I mean, like kudos to Jen for how she does with Maisha. I think it's beautiful to see a dark-skinned woman going through something and then another dark-skinned woman is like supporting her. Um, mm -hmm. I like that Maisha doesn't approach it with the energy of like, girl, you need to get rid of that baby. Like, mm -hmm. uh -uh. Mm -hmm. but I also like, mm -hmm. I also like that it's not like, oh, well, you you gotta keep it. Like she um she's very open, you know, to helping Gemma and trying to help Gemma navigate the best decision, not only, you know for herself, but I mean, low key also, you know, for Jake, cause Jake, he just ain't his feelings. He's gonna keep the baby. <laughs> like, <laughs> he, he, he 18 years plus, he thinking about just pre-K and like, you know, kindergarten and the little snacks and a little cute stuff. But, you know, he's not thinking about it in the long run. So for me, um, it was very interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, the being confused of like not wanting to do, I kind of just like stayed in that vibe, like even offset. Um, I mean, I'm an indecisive person, but I just was like, just real indecisive, even down to like what I want to eat. I was like, what do I want to eat? Like, do I want to eat this? I want to eat that. Like, I was just trying to carry the energy, you know, of not knowing what to do and like not really knowing um you know what decision to make and it was hard it was definitely hard um 
Gemma is going through a lot and you can easily, you know, fall into a depression with dealing with those, you know, type of things. And me in real life, like I definitely got a little sad because I was thinking like, dang, like, <laughs> what would I do? Like I had a little high school boyfriend, you know, and all of that, you know, we all have a little high school moments. But I was just like, oh, wait, like this is a little deep. Like, hold on, what I'm going to do? Um, but it was a great experience. I mean, shout out to Joel, who plays Marcus. Um, it was great to see, you know, a black man being supportive of a single father, really, being supportive of his daughter, you know, because he, he, I don't know, my daddy would have been like, girl. Yeah. <laughs> like, I was shocked at his reaction. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, you know, all around, I mean, it's just, yeah, like just said, it's just the way God works. Cause we don't know like how this always, you know, happens. And I used to always look at, um, I used to watch the Simpsons a lot and it would always seem like the Simpsons would like, I don't know, years, like, I don't want to say portray, but like, like have something going on and then it ends up happening in real life. And I was like, they, they did right. always seem to predict stuff. Yeah. yeah they would always predict stuff. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. And so it's cool to like kind of low key be on a show that, be predicted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but but it, but if I could if I could just echo what what Jim has said too, I think that you know the main reason for that is why we have our fingers so much on the pulse of what society is going through, mm -hmm. and especially as it relates to Black Americans, because Lena pays so much attention yes. to what's going on with us as a people. Like I give her a lot of credit for that. Um, you know, she is the one that. Um, you know, kind of kickstarts everything and throws these ideas out, you know, to her writers and and, and uh, communicates uh, with the actors as well to let us know what kind of journey we're going to be going on together and what kind of journey we're going to be taking the audience on. And with mm -hmm. her, you know, which I think is just awesome, um, she, um, she challenges our audience. Uh, she challenges us to look past, you know, what we thought was you know, black and white, she, she challenges us to look at the full spectrum of color that make up life. And, you know, with that, you, you get storylines like Gemma's storyline, where it seems like we're predicting, you know, something that's going on, but yet and still, you know, these are stories that are going on in everyday lives, especially with young black women. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just think it's being presented in a way where, you know, people are, are really able to, to take a look back and go, man, like, that's really, really something, you know, even, and, and I say case in point with me, especially because I'm a father. Uh, well, my son just turned 21, so he's grown now. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, during, wow, during. Cracking, the, not cracking. Right. Oh, good, thank you. Appreciate it. We hold it on to it. Hey, we're drinking water. Um, <laughs> no, but, but I, I, you know, even, um, you know, with Marcus, with, with Joel, uh, Joel Steingold, who plays Marcus, Jim's father. Um, even his reaction to her pregnancy or to, to him learning that she was pregnant, you know, it's it's not the traditional response. Like, like uh, Judea was saying uh, that that most black people traditionally have been known to the kind of reaction that they get. Um, so I think even with that, you know, we're helping to present something else, a different change scenario, the change the narrative, like, change the narrative a, a different way by which to approach our kids and talk about these tough issues. So yeah, I, I think, you know, again, I give a lot of credit to Lena for that. The amazing writers, um, you know, our directors who really take the time to communicate with us on set as actors, making sure that we feel comfortable with the stories that we're telling as characters. So yeah, I, I, I give a lot of credit to because I'll tell you when we come to work and when we have the pages, um, you know, we we all are talented in our own right, very much so. I, I will give us credit for that. But it's not a lot of heavy lifting that we have to do. It's really not. You know, we, we have a great writer's uh, room that presents us with amazing material week after week. And all we really have to do is just show up and execute and put forth our energy into it. And that's why it comes out the way that it does. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, it. You, you yeah, you said you said it, I was going to say, um, Lena and the writers do a great job of keeping their ear to the ground and keeping their fingers on the pulse of the Black community. And that's why I appreciate the show. Yeah, Absolutely. Tell, it's really like a for us, by us. Mm -hmm. yeah. are, are you guys in awe when y'all watch it? Every time. It's, yeah, it's, I'm sorry. You want to go, Jude? No, I, girl, I don't know. I'm like, oh, you can go. <laughs> 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, like at first it wasn't it wasn't really about watching the show, um, but. I think we we got into it or I got into it. And when I did, I was like, oh snap, like, okay. Mm-hmm. At first I didn't want to see myself. And then I, I stopped and I was like, oh, okay, this is a character. So it's a girl. Now I want to follow her story. But overall, yeah, each time it's something new. Um, everybody brings what they do best to the table. Um, and because we don't work on set all together, or we know we don't get to see everybody every day. Um, when you get on stage, you're like, oh, that's what that was supposed to look like. Okay. Like, yeah, I like, I like that. I like how you did that, that thing you did there. They said that was a tip. So I'm, I'm definitely one to be talking at the TV each time I watch the show, for sure. Yeah, no, I was definitely talk to the TV. My neighbors, it's so funny. Um, My neighbors just started watching The Shy. So they have been like binging from literally season one, episode one. And so like, you know, I'll go, I'll go over there, you know, just over there, I'll go over there and they'll be watching it and I'll be like, oh, Jimmy, no, Jimmy. <laughs> 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 I'm that I'm, like, I'm Jimma and I'll be like, man, hey, like Jimma, petty as hell. Like, I'll be talking to the TV and my neighbors be looking at me like, <laughs> This is you. Yeah. <laughs> that's you. That's you. That's yeah, funny. like the last episode I just saw, um, Maisha and Papa went to go get the cake and they said Kevion, Kevion instead of Kevin. And I was like, they know they trifling for messing up that boy cake. Like, <laughs> 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 that is hilarious. Uh, and I want to be mindful of you guys' time. So we have a few more questions we want to get in. Uh, Empress, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Um, no, you can come back to me. Okay, I'll come back. Maisha? Sure. I just wanted to ask all three I'm of so them. sorry. I could have sworn she was talking to me. Oh, right. I was going to say, we have a connection, okay, because okay, okay. you are my namesake. We got this connection going on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I just wanted to ask the three of you. Um, Genesis and Judea, you both mentioned kind of how you both in personal life and from your role on the show connect a little bit. I just wanted to ask like how, like is it ever super difficult to like go in and out of character? Like, does it get easier as you go? Like, how is it like getting in there and, you know, having the mindset? Um, well, I think it was funny how they wrote me and Jen is like growing a friendship this season. Um, cause we used to all like, we go on set, we'd be like, hey friend, hey friend. And like the other castmates, like the boys, they'd be like, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and so now we get to do it on TV. So, um, <laughs> so you know, it's, it's cool. Like, so this season, um, for me, it wasn't really that, I mean, hard other than like, you know, the depressed, like, you know, right. thing, trying to figure out what right. to do. It wasn't, um, that hard. Now last season, you know, y'all, I had to really act. <laughs> I would never do that in real life. You know, it, was, it was a lot. It was a lot. You know, um, no, but it was cool, though. I don't really um, have that difficult of a time. Jen? Uh, no, like, Maisha, to a certain extent, is me. I think I did an uh, exceptional job at giving and receiving from my character to the point that now we just coasting so it's like certain times we we interchange um like Mm -hmm. certain what uh what episode did we do we was in the, the chicken shop um, oh, she wanted mild sauce on the yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my genesis being like, really, like real life, why would you want it on the no, side? No, like, right, right. Like, what? Okay, okay. And then I just couldn't understand it. So that's why I was like, the side, but the lines were there. You feel me? So we do a wonderful job. Like, me and Maisha, or Maisha and I, we do a great job at coming together and making something beautiful, especially for rap scenes. I'll let me take over because you know this pen work, and then for other parts, I will let her do her thing and just read these lines out because we're trying to give you a story, and the cool everybody got to have something unique about them, and I think that's what's unique about whatever energy is going on over here with me. So right, and it flows really; it it just flows. It flows. Thank so. you. Great job. Yeah. We caught that sneak this on Papa, and your, when you were spitting. Now you know what. Oh, yeah. so funny. Yeah. 
this since we here, we could talk about, we could break it down. He didn't know about the song. He knew nothing about me writing it. He didn't know anything. And again, when time came for me to do it and we cut for the first time, he was like, oh, we got beef, we got beef. And I was like, boy, <laughs> like, A, this is a, this is a show. That's A. Right. But B, <laughs> um, if we really gonna talk about a lot of people come up to me, you shouldn't have did Papa like that. In relationships, since we was the wisest and the strongest relationship in like the, the teen era at the time, mm -hmm. um, like season up to season three, really, yeah. you supposed to know when to give and take from your person. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean inserting yourself into somebody's thing that they that they worked hard to get. The reason why she got what she got was because she was lending her art to you. Now, the fact that everybody else took that art and was like, we want to celebrate it, that has nothing to do with her. That has nothing to do with me. That don't got nothing to do with nobody. It's just about what happened and you got to deal with that. Mm -hmm. um, I know me personally on both sides, I wouldn't do that. Because this this your gig, Shawty, like go do your thing for real, and I'll right. be right here, like, yep, that's me. Never do I insert a business card. So, and you think that artists don't hold grudges? Mm -hmm. The first mm -hmm. thing we gonna do, we not gonna tell you you hurt my feelings unless you know we really are soul searching and listening to Erica Badu and you know wearing <laughs> all the things. Um, <laughs> we we not gonna do that. We gonna calmly sit down and make a million dollars from this one song and the most you're going to get from it is that's it that is it that's all you're getting from period so well, let, let, let me say let me say Janet your pen is platinum yes Thank you. okay yeah it's platinum yeah. oh yeah, yeah. no she no she she's dope i i honestly got to say cuz it's funny you know, to kind of echo what the ladies are talking about with, with watching, um, you know, watching our work when it's done. If, like Genesis was saying, we we pass each other, you know, between scenes because we don't we don't have a lot of material together. So um, we work in two different uh, like film zones, zone A, zone B. And, you know, they schedule our scenes accordingly uh, so that we could get in and out and for the sake of production or what have you. And so I always see Genesis and I always see Judea like coming from the South Asia and uh, me and Luke will always be joking to us. We'll be like, I wonder what they shot today. I wonder how it turned out. Man, I, I wonder how that scene. And, and by the time I get to see, especially those scenes when Genesis is performing, I just light up. Just a natural smile comes across my face because, you know, she's such a talented songwriter and artist. And, you know, me being... Um, me coming up as a young artist from the city, I know what that's like. You know what I'm saying? And and it's 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 not easy. You know what I'm saying? Because you carry you carrying a city on your back. You know people's expectations and the whole nine, and they want to see you win. But also in Chicagoans, we real real critical. So you know by the time I get to see the finished product, you know seeing the amazing work that Genesis has done, seeing the amazing work that um, Judea has done, especially in that bathroom scene. You know, because I, I posted on my Instagram, ladies, and I'll, I'll tell you personally here on, on this show, an amazing job. Amazing mm -hmm. job. Judea, nice. amazing job. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was right there in that bathroom right. with y'all trying yes. to figure out, you know, how we going to get through this situation. Man, so you know, just as much as you that guys, little tear, audience, this little tear she had on the walls. Yeah. Oh, it's so real. It's so real. <laughs> I think you got an act, friend. This is this <laughs> one right incredible. here. This is incredible. So no, I enjoy watching it alongside with y'all with, with everybody first season. But I have my moments too. Mm. Yeah. I love how y'all support each other too. That's I do good. too. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, it's a family. We we don't Absolutely. have it any other way. You know how it is on every anything we move Chicago's we do it together that's it's, right it's, it's, it is. so straight so like that that's yeah. right all right and Jason for your I just wanted to ask Jason for your character like you know over the years I've, I've watched you so this is different like this role is a little different how is it for you connecting although you've been in the game a long time do you find it difficult no I don't find it difficult I think that's a great question by the way thank you um, no, I, I don't think it's difficult. Um, I think for me, I, I just take a lot of pride in the work that I'm doing right now because I, 
I know Shy. Mm -hmm. I know that guy. I know I know about six cats that I grew up with, just like that. You know what I'm saying? So, and those guys in society are overlooked mm -hmm. and they're judged. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them aren't given a second chance after right. coming out of the system. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I take great pride um, as a black man and as an actor, black actor, to, to be able to tell their story mm -hmm. and to be able to, and I hate to use this word, but as it relates to mainstream media and how people outside of our community view us and black men in particular, mm -hmm. you know, I'm humanizing in a way, you know, this image that mainstream media has thrown out there as black men just being aggressive and always in the criminal justice system. Right. Can't mm -hmm. get right. And, right. You know, they misogynist and all they think about is, you know, having sex, and making babies, like no. all the negatives. All the mm -hmm. negatives. Like mm -hmm. I think what Shad has been able to successfully do is yeah, show y'all that yeah, he comes from that and he's capable of that, but right. he's greater than that. Right. As most black men are, as all black men are, as all black women are, we're greater mm -hmm. than, you know, these images and narratives that are thrust out there about us. And that's the beauty about this show that everybody puts forth in their performances. Not only me, Luke, everyone in this show mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. puts their best foot forward to make sure that we represent our community, you know, with pride and with respect. You dig? Preach, mm -hmm. preach, preach. <laughs> the real. <laughs> all right let's get to nate we didn't get to hear your question hey listen uh how y'all doing tonight Hi. what's up brother <laughs> i'm all right ladies uh great performances at last episode I, I i loved it the bathroom scene was was off the chain and i i, I really enjoyed that situation um today the, the relationship that you have with with your father and after the situation that happened in last season and but you, you really threw me off when, when he was saying, listen, if you're going to smoke weed, go outside. you like, no, it's cold. I ain't going outside. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I, 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 I applaud both of you ladies on the great job that you guys are doing. Um, Jason, hey, bro, I, 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 I applaud you to see you back on something that I can constantly watch every week now, bro. Like, I, I, I take it back to fear, brother. With with oh, love, man. even when you was doing music, we love love ambition. So yeah, you know yeah, I mean, man. that's that's how long I've been following your career, my man. So uh, it, it's great to see you on 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 something that I can really enjoy every week with my family and sit down and, and the the things that you have going on as this character and rebuilding this character, falling in love with a young lady now. Yeah, you know I'm saying and and and. You know, just even just the com coming home from the jail situation and rebuilding your structure and your and, and your life, man. I, I applaud the acting, man. It's really, really well, really good. Thank bro. you, mm -hmm. um, hey brother. Thank hey, you. Man. That 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 means a lot. And I'm and I'm gonna let you finish your statement, but I gotta tell yeah. you, man, that means a lot to me, brother. Because when I'm working and when I'm trying to figure this out, you know. As an actor trying to tell our story, I think about us. Right. I think about what my brothers want to see. True. true. How they want to see us portrayed. And, you know, I don't know a lot of the times how y'all gonna feel about certain things until it actually comes out and y'all are able to see it for yourselves and then share that feedback from me. So right. I want to let you know that you sharing that feedback with me, man. That means a lot, bro. I just don't take that sure. light. And, and I promise you, like, I'm, I'm going to stay committed to that, man, and make sure that even moving forward, you know, hopefully we'll be on for many more seasons or however long God sees fit to keep us going. But I want to let you know I, I'll be conscious of that, man, moving forward. You know what I'm saying? Because that that means a lot. That's real. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Even even sticking up, st sticking up for Victor on the situation of, bro, you like what you like, bro. If that's right. what you like, bro. Why hide it behind this situation with, with, with this other girl? If, if that's right. what you like, then proceed on. E even when you told them, there's plenty of people that's, that, that, that's in the transgender, gay, and lesbian community that aren't senators and, and congressmen. And I mean, they, bro, it, they're out there already. So you don't have to hide okay. anything. So I, I applaud you on that scene too, bro, because you gave it to him real. You hear me? And, and some, some dudes wouldn't have did that. They would have been like, man, if you don't get off that train and go ahead, man, and get with this girl for real, for real, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just stay with her for real. Like you leave that yeah. train alone and go ahead with this, but you 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 stuck to him. 
you you gave it to him as a man and you gave it to him as a friend, bro. And I, I can really appreciate that, homie. Mm -hmm. that's that's right. Thank you. That's, that's real talk right there. That's the spot real that talk. That is. That's real yeah, talk. That is. That is. I was gonna that's say, I wanted, yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to piggyback on what Nate said because my son told me that this last episode was one of his favorite episodes. And he specifically uh, talked about the relationship between Rashad and Bakari. He said he was moved by that and he thought it was really relatable because Bakari reminded him of one of our family members. So, you know, so that really spoke to him. And he said that this was his, that was his favorite episode to date of this time. Wow. That so, man, kudos, kudos to you, Jason. And no, all of you guys, because you guys are doing a wonderful job. Yes. Absolutely. And, and, and let me say, so and much. let me say this. When you took that gun from Bakari, you know, in the preview, <laughs> we saw you in the back, and we all were like clutching our hearts, man. We were thinking, yeah. don't get shot, man. Don't, right. don't do this to us, man. You cannot yeah. go out like that, you know. And, yeah. and the fact that what you did with him and you gave him that love, I'm gonna tell you, man. I, I look if you all are on forever, that's too short a time. Too short. Oh, man, I mean, you. what y'all are giving thank us, you. man. I, you know, it's it's very easy because when we read our comments, you know, everyone talks about how deep we go into the show, but it's easy mm -hmm. because you make it easy for us because you know your your acting is so real. So, thank you, I, look, man. Thank I, you Ron. No, no, thank you. You, I mean, I we. We are here to to just reap the rewards that you guys put out, and I'm telling you, man. If I tell my people, if you haven't seen it, you don't even know what you're missing. Come over to my oh, house man. And dinner and let you come and watch this. But you know, y'all got to see what the shy is doing. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, we love, the, and we love the lay. And we love the lay. That woman, you know, now now she got you dressed and wearing pea coats and everything too. Oh yeah! Oh yeah, my God, you guys! It's a, it's a party near. I'm so sorry. It's a party near. It's still my favorite yeah. outfit that he wore to this day. That's Let me tell you something about Mr. Mr. Weaver here. Okay, Uncle Jason, he he be dressing. Okay, he dressing. <laughs> on. It's this. Oh my God, y'all gonna see it, but it's just one suit, and I can't tell y'all, but it's good. He came out. I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> Yeah. Shout out! Day. Shout out to Mercedes! Shout out to Mercedes Cook, our our head costume designer. Uh, shout out mm -hmm. to the wardrobe department, everybody in the makeup department. Man, they work so hard. All of those people in both of those departments, the glam squad, um, mm -hmm. and just making us look mm -hmm. beautiful. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. our skin be glowing and shining, That's the amazing. clothes be looking right, hair be laid line is be on point you know it's just it's black excellence um not even being just represented in the storyline but even the way that it's presented visually in the way everyone looks and, and and in all actuality and what's so cool about that is that's how people look in chicago ain't nobody uh, walking around like looking bummy and you know what i'm saying i mean you got people that are going through things but you got black people in that community to take pride in the way that they look and how they step out of the house and i mean you got fellas you know they they gonna get into the stepping scene in in one of the episodes. But you got you got guys that come out the OGs, come out they suits, they gators, they lady mm. be looking right. She got her hair done. Everybody smelling good, looking good, <laughs> dancing. Oh, we getting into all that this season. Thank <laughs> y'all. Okay. That, that was that was that was a Marcus Graham outfit though. You had on though. Oh man, wait till you see the rest of them. <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm telling you, your boy got sharp because that's the one thing Lena told me. When we started season five, she said, I know I had you out here looking rough season four, right. which I which I didn't mind because I I for the first time in my life as, as an actor, the first time in my career, it allowed me to, you know, go under, go in depth and, right. and really get down with a character. So I wasn't mad at that. But by the time we got into, I think, the third episode of this season, I was like, okay, I want a haircut. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Yeah, ready to go, Chad. So, it, all, it all worked out. Yeah, Chad, I mean, Chad, they they had you in the kitchen and everything this 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 season, man. Yeah. Cooking, hey, doing man. everything for us. So doing that, everything. That was great. <laughs> Love. Okay, Empress, did you? We want to revisit you. Did you have a question or? I didn't really have a question, but I do. That, um, I love the um the roles that you guys played this season. Um, Genesis being a good friend 
um, Judea being like, you know, saying like, this is my body, especially with that touchy su- subject mm-hmm. going on. And then I love how um, Shad took in Bakari, like, if we had a lot, we need more of that, like in reality. So like, sometimes I'm just watching the shot and I'm like, Lena need to go. I don't know where she needs to go, but like, we need more of that in the real world, like in the real Chicago. A lot of the things I see each week on the shot, it's like, if that stuff was going on in our city, our city would be so much better. All mm-hmm. the violence and um, the togetherness on the shy. I wish our city could have that for real. They do, mm-hmm. a- but the part is, it's like I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And they do a pretty good job portraying our city. And also, Genesis, I do want to let you know. I do remember coming to see you like when you were even younger and you were performing at the Lyric Lagoon. I remember you. I like. Ooh, you know, and I that's know so. About that. So when I see performing each week on um on the shot, I'm like, they don't even know she really liked that. Like she been like right. that. So oh my, God. <laughs> oh my God. So you oh you've been there. What yeah. that's so cool. Empress, you're the best. Oh that's God. awesome. I don't know. No, no, you, I'm like, um, come through Empress. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and through. I want to piggyback off of what you were saying about um you know, if we had more of that in our city, the gag is we do. It's just not televised. You feel me? It's like, yeah. it's a slow burn. And it's like, I see it all the time. Like, you you know, when you come to the Lyric Lagoon, we don't have that violence. We don't have none of that. It's a beautiful community of love and it's there. It exists. We just need to get it on to mainstream platforms and switch that narrative of whatever people think that this uh what's it called the negative connotation that's put on chicago is yeah. really just people surviving and in, in the circumstances right. and in the history that they've been given mentally but in our hearts we, we don't do that because we're not built like that exactly. that's right that's right exactly, exactly. Just i like told the- y'all it's, it's, it i told y'all I, y'all didn't need me for this interview <laughs> it's all about these two young ladies right here I told They're y'all. Amazing. It's a blessing uh, to have all y'all because it is. You know, it's a blessing to have all of y'all. That, that terrible na- narrative that Chicago had, that great cloud that Chicago has, Philly has as well. Genesis, you need to come over to Philly too. We had, we, we used to have this place called Five Spot, where it was like uh-huh. a neo soul type vibe. But when I say you, you need to have contests in it, you will probably win them all. Like lyrically. Oh, it's a contest? Yeah. Like lyrically, you're, it, it, it's, it's called Five, well, it's called Five Spot. But lyrically, you're amazing. You're you're yeah. dope. Mm-hmm. You're dope. Thank you. Oh, you no, know Genesis, who else you can, from you Philly? Can go, you can go hard in Philly. Philly. No, that, that's real though. If you, you if know, you can um, get busy in Philly, Jen. You can get Robin's busy from anyway. Philly too. Robin that's. from Philly. And oh, that's Robin, right, Robin. Robin Emerson. So all the fire, whatever. Is so in wait Philly. a minute. That's so yeah. that's Dre. Yeah, she plays. Yeah, Dre. she's really from Philly. Oh, she's from Philly. Philly. She's from Philly. 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 Yeah, she's from Philly. Oh, yeah. That's good to know. Her pen is nasty. She 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 crazy too. Yeah, she's dope. Wow. She used to do spoken word. She used to do spoken word. Yes. That makes yes. Dope. That makes sense. She's wow. dope. Huh? And like Genesis said too, the, the lady that I just mentioned, Mercedes Cook, right. the costume designer, right. Philly. She from Philly too? All right. Wow. Philly. Wow. We got we got representation on there. Yeah? Stand Y'all up. rapping. Y'all rapping. <laughs> 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 Um, Jason, one thing I got to mention, because Nate mentioned it, when he mentioned uh, love ambition, I can't stand the pain. Oh, that's oh, what's wow. yeah. I, I pulled that up the other day, man. Yo. <laughs> you took me back to the early 90s. I grabbed my wife, man. I said, come here, girl. We got to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's that's what we made it for. That's uh, what we made it for, for, for people to have moments like that. Um, Working on love ambition. For anybody out there that's not familiar with it, I've had a recording career since I was like 11, 12 years old um, yeah. when I was signed up to Motown mm. uh, right after my deal with Disney. We're working on The Lion King. And I was blessed um, to put out a solo project called Love Ambition, which to this day is like considered to be a stepper's classic in Chicago. Mm-hmm. We have a, a culture in Chicago where it's like couples dancing. It's called stepping. Yes, and that's that song, Love Ambition, is one of the staples. And it's so funny. It's actually the the the, um, the record that's played 
Now, this is what I felt kind of bad about. It's the record that's played in the club when it's time to go home. So I, was in a, <laughs> so I was in the club one night with one of my friends, my man, Tone Capone. He's like a very uh, popular radio DJ there in the city. And he hosts, you know, these different nights, different clubs. One night, he and I went out together. And, and uh, you know, we were hanging. We had a great night. We were partying. We danced, all of that. So as the night was winding down, he had just kind of, you know, yelled over to me. He's like, wait till the end of the night. Wait till the end of the night. So I'm thinking... Oh man, he, he got some girls. Like I'm thinking something totally else. I'm like, oh, he, oh, we about to go have breakfast and something's going on. He's like, nah, just wait. So as soon as the lights come on, they start playing love ambition, and the DJ want to give me a shout out. Shout out to Jason Weave in the building. I'm like, baby, you supposed to be shouting me out while it's popping, right? right? Like, the lights come on, and then you playing the old man joint. Like you feel know, like the old man in the club. Like, no, but it's dope. Know, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. Thank you for that, Ronald. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure, man. Look, <laughs> you don't mind. I have one last thing to throw in there because, like, Jason, I really do feel like I grew up on you. Like, I feel like your work has spanned every major era of my life, from like Tiffany said, the Michael Jackson story, Lion King, Smart Guy. Mm, like that was dope. my show. And then going on to ATL and of course now to Shy. But you've worked mm. with so many heavy hitters throughout your career. Do you have a favorite person that you've worked with? Oh, me. Me. I'm, 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 I'm yeah. On the show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a- a- absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, work, work, working with Genesis and, and Judea, although I've never had a scene with yes. them. Yes, it, it, it's <laughs> awesome. No, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. Um, Huh? I have what did you say? We had one scene. Oh yeah, we do got one scene together. No, this... we may have a few because we was praying at the table when oh. I was peaches. So oh, really right. Judea. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay, so really Judea, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. If if there's anybody I've taken anything from and learned from, it's definitely <laughs> been my niche Judea. You know, it's Broadway, <laughs> no, but... Broadway guys. I'm a thespian, you know. Exactly, real thespian. <laughs> But no, but but I mean, honestly, throughout the course of my career that I've been blessed to have, I, I don't have um, a favorite, you know, big name star or group of actors that, I, that I've worked with. And the reason why is because in all those different chapters and phases of my career and in those different projects, I've learned something as I've gone along. So like I learned something on the Jackson, a really work ethic and professionalism. I learned something on The Lion King. I learned something working on Thea. Learned something on Smart Guy. Learned something on Drumline, ATL, all these films. And even now, on The Shy, I'm learning. You know, Mm. I'm finding new things out about myself as an actor. Um, I am inspired by the young performers Mm -hmm. that I'm working with and interacting with every day. Like, I'm just keeping it real. And I'm not just saying it's because they're here on this interview with me. These young ladies that are on here inspire me. My man, Ahmad Ferguson, who plays mm-hmm. Bakari. Oh, Bakari, yeah. Michael S. You know, yes. Shaman. Shaman. I mean, listen, when I come to work every day and I see these kids and, and, you know, how they're conducting themselves on set and how they're going in and killing every day, that lights a fire up under me. That reminds me of when I got into this for the, in the, before in the first place. Watching mm-hmm. them, their excitement, their enthusiasm you know, their level of preparedness, even at such a young age, it just makes me like, man, like they, man, these kids off the chain, man, I need to step my game up. So all of that being said, um, every experience that I've had of being blessed to be able to walk on a set and work with beautiful people, I've always learned something and walked away from a positive, walked away with a positive experience. So every opportunity that God has given me to work, to put food on the table through the gift that he's given me, that's been a blessing. And I don't take any of it for granted. Mm, I love that. Amen. You, too. you, know? you, guys are you still doing features, Jason? <laughs> doing features? Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm still, I'm, I'm still, you know, I'm I'm in the studio right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna release something independently. Come um, on. The reason why is, you know, people people been asking, asking about it. Um, and I I, I finally am as far as I'm concerned, I have a story to tell. I kind of stepped away from music for a while because the stories that I was telling as a young kid were other people's stories. 
It wasn't mm-hmm. my story. As much as I love, you know, singing Love Ambition, and I'm glad that it, it resonated and connected with so many people, that wasn't my story. That wasn't coming from me. That was coming from Keith Crouch and Rasan Patterson. Mm-hmm. But now I have a story to tell. And, and I think when you're a true artist and when you want your music to connect um, and just your artistry to connect and resonate with people, it has to come from the soul. And so now that's the approach that I'm taking with my music. And so far, so good. We'll see, you know, we'll see how people react to it when it comes out. But I feel really good about it. So I hope you all enjoy it too. And we're gonna have to do another yeah. interview when that yes. when that happens. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Been great. I mean, I feel like we could go on forever with y'all, but like I said, we <laughs> do want to try to keep things and, and uh, be conscious of your time. So um, on you. that note, we just want to really clap it up for y'all and say thank you. <laughs> you know, awesome. Thank you, Jason, today in Genesis. You guys are amazing. Yes, you are. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thanks, guys. Please yeah. continue Thanks, to y'all. keep up the great work. Keep telling these amazing stories the way you have been and really putting your soul in it like you have because it's really making um a big impact it is that's awesome and you guys support the shy support the shy on showtime best show thank you so much best show on earth thank you all so much thank you all for the support thank you to all the fans out there everybody that's been riding with the show since day one and is still rocking with us again we thank you guys here at the spot real talk you know again that the the commentary and and the analysis and just the breakdown that you guys give and allowing us to have a, a, a more meaningful discussion even after the show's air as a community. I commend y'all for that and I salute y'all and please Thank know you. the same amount of support that y'all are giving us we're going to continue to give to y'all. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you kindly for saying that. that. We and appreciate it. Thank, thank you for helping open up our platform too. I mean, you three yeah. are absolutely the best. Thank you, guys. Mm-hmm. Thank, mm-hmm. You, Thank you. You guys yeah. have been amazing. <laughs> Keep spitting Genesis. You know. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You are amazing. I'm just, I, I was looking at your bio and seeing how old you really are. And, you, and you're so cute. Look, just like a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, we, follow, we follow y'all all on two Instagram, too, as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. well uh, Gemma, you not on Instagram? Yes, she is. Yes, yeah, she's on Instagram. She on Instagram. Oh, uh, not as Jim outfits. I'll be looking at her for some fashion tips. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, it's my name. It's official Judea Brown. Okay, yeah. all right. I'm following Judea. you right now. I'm following you right now. Say. Everybody go follow her right now. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank all thanks right, y'all guys. so much. Well, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jay. Oh, thank guys. you. Bye-bye. Right. Have a great day. Bye. Bye-bye. Done this before you fly. I won't catch you, don't know I'm stolen. Cause you love to have them all crying. Mm-hmm. Gonna be sweet, day. Tell me you need me. But I'm from a city that's high school. I give them the cinema, I go. Uh, Cause you a bad man, if she don't love money. She break cries real fast, like a man.